Welcome to Digital Asset News, like a top stories in crypto. And yeah, break down a bite-sized piece. And today, just as the thumbnail and title suggests, another spot Bitcoin ETF was once again rejected by the SEC. So we'll take a look at what exactly happened there. Also, we'll do a flip side and take a look at some good news for once about what's going on. And this is actually regulation coming down from the Biden administration. You're going to hear a lot of stories about this. I'm going to give you my take as why well. I think this is actually good news. Then we're going to talk about planting those crypto seeds because right now it's a little bit bearish sentiment. And then we'll get into final thoughts. So before we do all that, let's take a look at what's going on into the market. So today or tonight, it is January 27th, uh, 6.40 p.m. Uh, uh, San Juan, Puerto Rico time or in Guaynabo where I'm at. So Eastern, you're looking at about 5.40 or so. This is actually our, our second video of the day. And, uh, you know, it doesn't get much much better than this as the market starts to get into the bearish sentiment. And if we just take a look at it, everything's down. Everything's down, S&P, NASDAQ, everything's down across the board. And it doesn't matter the positive news of, of what's coming out. Uh, you know, earnings report came out in some businesses, looked pretty good, Microsoft being one of those, they still took a big tumble. Uh, you can take a look at the uh, GDP of, uh, of the United States. And over the last quarter, it was actually, it grew at almost one and a half uh, times what they thought it was going to. So so that was pretty good, but yet everything just tumbles down because there is an irrational fear out there. And I think everybody's just afraid of one guy and his name is Jerome Powell. So if you want to get a scoop on that, watch this morning's video. I'll link at the very end, but everything's down across the board in the last hour, 24 hours, seven days, everything's down. Well, except Binance coin, watch out 3.9%. That's pretty good. Uh, Shiba Inu up 0.4%. And then die 0 0.1. That's like a stable coin. So everything's down across the board. It's looking pretty bloody out there. The S and P 500. We can see that that also also took a tumble. And over five days looks even worse. Month, six month, yeah, about the same. And then of course Nasdaq uh, took another tumble today. Five day, one month, six month. So not the great. Wow, six month looks pretty bad. So not the greatest of days. And uh, you know, like I said, I mean everything's just down across the board. So what I want to get into real quick is the main story of the day which is the sec rejects fidelity's wise origin spot bitcoin etf so this just came out uh, about a couple hours ago and it states this is why it was rejected the proposal did not meet the standards designed to prevent fraudulent and manipulative practices and protect investors in the public interest the regular sec said and off from there, which I think is kind of funny because like, I mean, it's not like an ETF hasn't been approved. I mean, in Canada, Fidelity launched a spot Bitcoin ETF over there, worked out pretty well. I believe in Brazil, they have one in a couple other countries. But uh, here in the good old US of A, Gary Gensler is not gonna let that happen. Futures are okay, that's fine. And if you wanna spoof metals all day long, JP Morgan, do it, go right ahead. But if you're gonna do a crypto ETF, forget it. There is no way because there is no assurances and so on and so on down the road. So that's what's happening. And I just have to say real quick, is anybody dumbfounded by this? Is anybody like, wow, I really thought it was going to go through? I know you might have. I've been saying this for a long time. That I don't, I, I mean, look, I'm not perfect, but there's one thing that I have been pretty right on, which is this ETF nonsense. People have been talking about this since I got in, in crypto in 2017. And some friends of mine believe it's actually going to happen uh, this year. I do not. I have no faith in the SEC. I do not believe that they're going to make the right choice. I'm going to believe that they just want to, for some reason, never ever appoint or go through a spot ETF. And the question that I have for everybody is, do we really need it? Do we really need it? I mean, we maybe for you know a lot of uh, the big money players that want to get in, but you know what? If they want to make money in the crypto game, they'll find a way and it's not an ETF. So that's just what I have. I'm not going to delve deeper into it because I never thought I was going to go through and I could really care less about a spot ETF. That's what we have. Let me know what you think about that in the comment section. Let's go over our next piece, which is some good news. And I, before I get into it, you're going to hear this story a lot tonight or tomorrow, wherever else, uh, when you hear this again, and they're going to put a pretty negative spin on it. I'm going to tell you why I think this is good news. So this here, the Biden administration is to regulate Bitcoin as a matter of national security. Now, hear me out. Just wait, wait for it. Here's what we got. Let's get some data before we make any judgments. So the White House wants to set out a cohesive set of policies to regulate Bitcoin and crypto as currently legislation and its enforcement are scattered across sectors and agencies, according to multiple reports. The order, this order coming down, 
is set to come under the umbrella of national security efforts as the administration seeks to analyze crypto and employ a cohesive regulatory framework that would cover Bitcoin, crypto, stablecoins, and NFTs. This is designed to look holistically at digital assets and develop a set of policies that give coherency to what government is trying to do. Uh, this was a person familiar with the White House's plan. Because digital assets don't stay in one country, it's necessary to work with other countries on synchronization. The White House's plan is to bring order to the approach the government is now using to regulate crypto, which is just downright awful. So when you first read that story, sounds pretty dangerous, right? Because we are all afraid of regulation. I personally am not that uh, afraid of regulation, even though I know in the comments I uh, will hear about it. But here's the thing. I've said this from day one when I started this channel. <clears throat> we need a little regulation. We need a little re regulation for people to get in and to feel safe and be okay with it. And then also remember, and I talk about this all the time, if you want to do a comparison between crypto and the internet, the government already regulated the internet. In the mid 90s, they came out with law 230. And it said that if you were a website owner, you could not get sued or be held liable for anything that was said by the participants on your specific website. Now, of course, there was different provisions. If there was like uh, really illegal activities like kidnapping and craziness like that, of course, right? But just for things that were said, it allowed free speech to flourish. And then that way the internet flourished. And then guess what? If you take a look at the top five stocks in the S&P 500, what are they? Well, they're Facebook, they're Apple, they're Amazon, they're Netflix, and they're Google. What do those have in common? Well, maybe not Apple, but a lot of them are just internet based. And if it's a national security issue, money, power, whatever you want to call it, revenue is a national security issue. So if they want to keep that type of revenue that is coming in, they saw what happened with the internet. I think they would be smart enough, hopefully, that they wouldn't let this opportunity languish outside and let other countries just gobble it up. Let's say Russia wants to get into it. Let's say, I don't know, Venezuela. Let's say China really wants to really develop blockchain technology and go all the way forward and just start to really run the whole gambit. Now, where does the power shift? Well, the power shifts to the people that have the money. So when I take a look at this, I'm like, I think this could actually be a good thing if they don't over-regulate. I know people will beat me up, but that is what it is. And this really comes down to my next point, which is I read this great article and it was talking about Web 3.0. And when I hear Web 3.0, honestly, I just think of an upgrade to Web 2.0. And it's not, that's not how it works, okay? So Web 3.0 is all going to be based on blockchain technology. I mean, it could be on layer one solutions like, like Ethereum to actually log in using Ethereum, to actually making payments using crypto and digital assets. You can't just plug that in to Web 3.0. It would be kind of like using Web, Web 1.0, which was where you could say, hey, uh, you know what? Do you, here's my my travel agency. Uh, you want to book something with the travel agency? Well, come into my office because there's no way to do that on, on the website. But I'll give you my address. So you can actually physically come in. Then Web 2.0 came about, and you could actually transact on the internet, and that was pretty cool, right? Now with Web 3.0, now you're going to be in charge of your own identity. You're going to be in charge of your own security. You're going to be in charge of your own crypto and digital assets, and you may actually be able to do this on blockchain technology. And you're going to actually own your own everything. So you can't just kind of upgrade that and put that in there. And I think if America figures it out and says, you know what, we would rather be at the forefront of that and have that revenue come into our country, just like we did with Google, just like we did with Amazon, just like we did with all these big companies and we regulate. And of course, then we also get the tax to live in tar out of them, which they do actually get out of the taxing situation. I think it could be a good thing. So I know people are going to say this is the most awful thing of all time, but I think, I think this can actually be good and we can get a little clarity. And lastly, I will just say this. If they come down and say everything's a security, that's fine. Because you know where else you can get a bunch of securities? You can get on Robinhood. Those are equities, those are stocks. So why can't we just say, you know what? All these cryptos are, are, are a security or a commodity or whatever else. Just make the decision so we can actually move forward. Let me know what you think in the comment section. Pretty sure I'll get roasted on that one. Let's move on to our next piece, which is planting seeds. So look, I know it's not the greatest time and it's a little bearish right now, but this is the time that you build. You build up and go, okay, well, it's not the greatest of times right now. I did the same thing and uh, here we are. So what I wanna talk to you about real quick 
is this little gem of an article, Crypto IRA Platform iTrust, that's the one that's in the top left-hand corner all the time, raises $125 million in Series A funding. Just quickly, I'll say this. Left Lane Capital led the round. They came up with $100 million, and then they got $25 million from Left Lane and other investors, which are unnamed. Great, $125 million. Good for those guys. This is the first time iTrust Capital has raised venture capitalist funds. The firm was bootstrapped with $1.3 million in total seed capital secured from friends and family. I had no idea that's how they got started. Friends and family got them to where they are for iTrust. Good job. 1.3 million, American dream is alive. The Series A round bring the valuation of iTrust Capital, which only launched in 2019 with friends and family money, to over $1.3 billion. That's insane. So what I wanna do now is 125 million is a lot of money. And I will say that I've been with iTrust now for a couple of years. Remember, that's where you can put your, especially if you're in America, you can put your crypto into an IRA. And at that point, whenever you retire at 59 and a half or older, you can take those gains out tax-free. That's exactly what Peter Thiel did. He put all his shares of PayPal in there when it was worth absolutely nothing. And he's going to be able to take it out at 59 and a half. And he's going to pay 0.0% capital gains because that's the law, baby. So my question is this. They stopped all the monthly fees. It used to be twenty nine ninety five. They they got away. They did away with that. They have more crypto now. I'm going to ask Anthony, uh, who is uh, VP of marketing and funds over there, uh, Anthony Berlino. What are they doing with this money? That's a lot of money. So where's that coming to? Let's check this out. Here's Anthony, VP of brand. Anthony, where's all this money going? It's one hundred twenty five. It's one hundred twenty million million dollars. That's a lot of money. So what are you guys doing with all that dough? Yes. So we are super excited to be here to connect with your audience with with our community obviously and we are happy that <clears throat> with left lane capital we have raised this money and a lot of people saw our social media announcement they saw the news on the block or barons or you know wall street journal whatever wherever else it was and they said well what's going to happen with this right how is this going to help us and yes. so we do want to let our community know we are definitely here for you this capital is going to be used for really three main things so the first is to continue to grow the brand. We really want to bring crypto IRAs uh, mainstream. We want to help crypto go mainstream. So we are going to continue to be getting out there with partners like yourself, with other content creators, and all the traditional advertising. So you'll you'll see us on the TV, you'll hear us on the radio, you'll see us on your favorite YouTube channel, Digital Asset News, right? The second one is we are going to continue to expand our team. You know, building. The, one of the fastest you know, fintech companies in the U.S. requires a lot of amazing, talented people. And so we are growing our human capital. We're using this financial capital, this money to get really amazing humans, to build better products, to get great developers, wonderful marketing people, uh, you know, account, accounting, everything that you would imagine in a company who wants to really go mainstream. That requires a lot of talented individuals. So we want to recruit them. We want to pay yeah. them well, and we yeah. want to retain them. And finally... Uh, is build amazing products. So we listen to our community. We appreciate our community. And we are going to take this money to continue to invest again in these amazing humans who will build great things. And so um, a lot to come in the next couple of years for crypto IRAs, for iTrust Capital, and for all of our partners in our community. Yeah, I got it. So to talk about, let's let's dig into that real quick about the products. Because when I first came in, I've been, I've been with you guys for a couple of years now. And when I first came in, first of all, there was fees every month. It was 30 bucks. You guys wiped that away. That was great. The second thing was, it was kind of a big pain. It was a hassle, honestly, for the wire transfers. I'm not a big fan of banks anyhow. And now I got to pay for a wire transfer fee and everything else. Are you guys helping that out or moving forward in that? Yeah, so always encountering the pain points uh, are what we want to do. So first, really those monthly fees were a, a big pain point for people. They said, hey, I just want to start a small IRA and get going over the years. I really don't want to be paying you know, $20, $30 a month, right? And so we wiped those away. We cover the cold storage fees and, and everything that goes along with that. <clears throat> and you know, we, we enjoy it. We've been continuing to grow rapidly. The next phase was people said, hey, you know, when I deposit money, it's still a little difficult, right? I'm sending in a wire and it's taking uh, you know, two days. It costs $30, et cetera. So we rolled out ACH payments. It integrates directly with your bank and is a little easier. This week, we're going to be rolling out and we're testing. It, it should, hopefully it goes well. And if so, we'll, we'll, we'll lock it in that uh, next day ACH. So you want to make a contribution to your IRA, uh, just do an ACH payment. And the next day, you should be able to be good to trade. 
And so these are the pain points we always want to hear. I, I always want to hear what is wrong so we can solve those problems. And uh, ACH is, is, is something that's coming out this week. Faster ACH. Yeah, that makes sense. And because, I mean, to get things going and moving, great. Because if you, you were just talking about cash contributions and like that, as a reminder, everybody, if you're in the United States, uh, the last day for cash contributions is April. I want to say April 15th. Am I wrong there? April 1st, April 15th for cash contributions for the previous year. Because for me, and I think most most people, it's $7,000 per calendar year that you can actually contribute to your Roth IRA. And then, of course, that is tax-free when you turn 59 and a half, unless you retire early and you go through all that rigmarole. But that's not the thing. So, okay, makes a lot of sense there. And then talk more about products because, I mean, the ACH is good. And then I know, like, I mean, you've got some, there's some pretty good products that you guys have as far as, you know, what you have to actually get into uh, for crypto as far as an IRA. Ave, Cardano, Algorand's a new one. I'm going to have to actually put to that one. Avalanche, what's what's the new ones? Because these look, well, I know gold and silver. Actually, you know what? I own gold and silver in mine, as a matter of fact. So all the gold bugs, you can put it here too. Uh, I think Mana, was that a new one or no? Yes. Yeah. So the, the two most recent additions uh, have been Decentraland Mana for those who kind of want to get exposure to the metaverse, the NFT economy, right? Decentraland is one of the leaders there. Um, Avalanche was just added uh, last week or this week, potentially Monday. Um, and that is, you know, another layer one blockchain that sort of uses the Ethereum virtual machine to be more scalable with smart contracts. So I know people have been asking for new assets. We, we definitely hear you and we always appreciate um, the requests. We, we were a little slower to release some, some assets and now we're, we're back in the groove. So people are gonna continue to see new assets, hopefully your favorite assets that will be available on the platform for you and everyone to self trade. And um, you know, we're, we're continuing to really build onto the greater vision, right? The, the first step in a crypto IRA is being able yeah. to sort of self trade buy or sell on the platform with the assets. And we are building what is the grand vision, right? You know, inter interacting with staking, uh, DeFi, and things like that. So our team is always working very hard to bring what the community wants. And, uh, you know, it's it, it's amazing yeah. time. We're always happy to hear from you. Yeah, I know, like, like people talk to me all about it because they, they think it's great that they can actually trade within the Roth IRA and not pay any capital gains tax. And I'm like, well, I'm not a big trader, but this probably would have been a great time when Jerome Powell comes out because today is January 26th, 2022. We're waiting for Jerome Powell to come out and see how much he's going to raise uh, the rates. So that's just something to keep in mind. And then lastly, I was going to ask you the question, which is, I know you can't speak for, you know, for every specific thing that is going on, time is limited, but Anthony, for your, for your vision for iTrust products, what do you see coming on the pipe that you guys could potentially do and, and, and how do you envision everything? Yeah. So really when I think about the, the development of the crypto landscape, it was, you know, just a few years ago that people were saying, hey, there's there's not even custody. The reason why institutions are not moving yeah. in is there's no secure custody. So now custody has been solved. And mm -hmm. then people were saying, well, hey, you know, people are not really adopting crypto. There's not a lot of good companies out there, et cetera. And then, you know, there's the Coinbase of the world, the Celsius of the world, the iTrust of the world. And now people are still saying um, the, you know, with the, the worries around taxation and so many people moving yes. and um, I mean, whether it's Puerto Rico, whether it's Nevada, people are genuinely fleeing places to try to lower their taxes, right? And so yeah. we just feel we're at a very interesting point right now where crypto is this very important asset from a macro perspective for so many different ways. Uh, taxation and people wanting to optimize for taxes is potentially at the top of minds of a lot of people. And that's where we want to be there to fulfill and bring those two things together with the perfect marriage to essentially have crypto with tax advantages. And so I'm obviously not a, a financial advisor or a tax advisor, but it would be very important uh, for everyone to at least consider if a crypto IRA fits into their financial plan, because again, you moved, I moved, a lot of people are moving to save on taxes. Mm -hmm. What if there was this thing called a crypto IRA that provided tax benefits? And so now that we have that, we are making it so you cannot hopefully not just self trade, but is the full instantiation of crypto where you and me and everyone will, will get our ledgers and we'll go deposit assets into Ave or go onto Sushi or whatever that is. I hope one day that you can be interacting with the blockchain and getting yield and participating in governance and doing everything you would want to, which crypto and these assets are designed for, but doing it inside of your crypto IRA. 
because you're protected. Now there's a lot of unanswered questions, not a lot of regular, uh, regular, regulatory clarity on clarity on these things. Right, uh, has right. a DeFi governance ever been in a crypto IRA? Has anyone ever voted on a blockchain protocol? No. Uh, do I want to see that? Definitely. And so we work with our legal team. We work with leaders to see if this is possible. And if it is possible within an IRA legally, we would like to technologically build it. And again, that's just my vision. A lot of people in the company have different visions and we're, we're trying to come together to build an amazing future. And um, I think that the future is definitely bright. Left Lane Capital, our partners, partners like you. And uh, yeah. Yeah, well, you know what I want. I'm just waiting for it. So we'll see how it all works out. But uh, the last thing I will say is that people, people ask me now, like, well, Rob, you're in Puerto Rico. So what's the difference? Because now there's no capital gains, but you don't understand. I mean, just like in 1933, when gold was confiscated, Governments can change anything. And there is rumblings right now in, in the Puerto Rican Senate to take away Act 60. So who knows what can happen? I'm just here to hedge my bet. And that's why I still, still have things with iTrust. So, Anthony, any last words of wisdom before we take out of here? No, just uh, much appreciation to you and, and your amazing community who has, has came and, and really welcomed us and have blended together. So we're here for you. We're here for your community. And we're here for the crypto economy. And we're not going anywhere. Awesome. Thanks, man. All right, everybody. So uh, thanks, Anthony, for stopping by. Appreciate it. Let's jump back. All right, Anthony. So thanks for stopping by. I appreciate that. Then just to finish up uh, as far as like planting seeds, because that's just a, a good idea to do. I will just say, I'll leave you off with this. If you're in America, tax time is coming up. So if you need to actually water those seeds and do the things you need to do, uh, don't avoid taxes. I'm sorry to say that the IRS will find you. So this is the program that I use, CryptoTrader.tax. When I first started up, and when I loaded it and got everything in there, it took me 30 minutes to get it all done and set, shipped it over to my CPA. So this is the easiest way to use it. There's a link in the description, it looks just like this, and it gives you 20% off. So also as a reminder, it's not just the API integration, which they now have with Voyager, but also with decentralized exchanges. So if you were a, a DGEN and bought a, and bought a different crazy stuff out there, and you're like, wow, how do I do that? Well, I guarantee the government probably knows it in some way, shape or form. And you can be able to uh, actually get through all those transactions through CryptoTrader.tax. So that's it for today. So look, uh, that's all we have. And final thoughts, I will just say, uh, lastly, I know it's been a tough couple of weeks. And I know that there's a, it's, a, it's a tough road ahead. But um, in all honesty, uh, this is where millionaires are made. And I hate to say it like that. I know no one wants to hear it because we all want to see everything go up and everything's to the moon and Lambos and, and moon shines and it doesn't work like that, unfortunately. It's just one of those things. And uh, I'll be here for the long haul. You'll see me here every single day and I'm right there with you. All right, that's it. So if you liked today's video, give it a thumbs up. Also consider subscribing. A lot of things we talk about are time sensitive and that's all for today. So thanks so much for watching. I appreciate it. See you on the next one.